Okay, so welcome back. Um, this video is part one in a series I'm doing on power supplies. And we're going to go in depth on power supplies and how they're designed and why they're designed that way. And try and get a conceptual understanding of each function in the power supply and see how is it designed, why is it there, what is it used for. And what we're going to do is we're going to reverse engineer this power supply. And this is a 460 watt um, computer ATX power supply. And we're going to look at all of the different functions in here and try and understand them. And we're going to break the, the power supply down into functional blocks like you see here. We've got the AC coming in, we've got the filtering and protection, we've got the rectification, we've got power factor correction, we've got um, the power stage, the main transformer, and then we've ultimately got the uh, DC outputs. And we're going to do things like bench testing. We're going to hook things up to a scope and see what we actually get. And we're going to ultimately develop an LT SPI simulation of a basic functional AC to 12 volt DC converter. And we're going to model each of these um, separate functions. We've got the um, input filtering. I've got a separate uh, circuit showing the power factor correction and the forward converter and the output. And we're going to get into some detail on these and show how each of these um, functions works. And we're even going to go to the extent of understanding the power coming into your house or, or your business, wherever you're going to um, plug in your power supply. What protection is out there? What is the power company do, doing? And what can you expect to see in your um, incoming power? That's very important when you design the power supply. Um, in terms of protection and filtering to see what's uh, actually coming in. Okay, so here's the basic um, diagram of what we're going to need for our switching power supply. Um, we've got 120 volts coming in, and the output is going to be 12 volts DC, 5 volts DC, and 3.3 volts DC. This is for a newer ATX power supply. Uh, again, 12 volts is for the GPU, the CPU, the, the big power using devices. The GPU might take, you know, 200, 300 watts. And CPU, another 60 watts, something like that. So this is going to be a high power um, device, and it's going to have these three voltages. So let's start off with the basics and figure out how we're going to get something that converts our wall outlet to these voltages. Okay, so now that we've decided we need a um, AC to DC converter, um, you might think about starting out with something very simple like this, a very simple uh, bridge rectifier. And on the left here, we've got a 120 volt, 60 hertz um, AC source, which you might get out of your wall outlet, or if in Europe, just double it and make it 50 hertz. And we've got an AC source coming in. On the output, we've got DC. And in this case, I've got a simple full bridge rectifier for diodes. I've got a capacitor to store energy when the sine wave on the input is going negative to give you a positive DC. And here's a 100 ohm load. So I encourage you to open LT Spice and put this together and get a good feel for uh, what's a simple rectifier uh, DC to DC converter looks like. Now, some things to keep in mind when you're doing this. Um, if you use LT Spice, you might be familiar with the need for grounds, or else sometimes LT Spice goes a little bit crazy. So, in this case, what I've done is on the, the AC sine wave side, I don't have any grounds, and I've got a single ground on the DC side. And the reason is if I put a, a ground over here, you can see if this is grounded and I run it through this diode. The other side is also grounded. So basically, you're shorting out that diode through ground. So in this case, I've got a sine wave coming in. If you look at the characteristics, it's basically zero DC offset. I've got an amplitude of 170 volts, 60 hertz. Uh, I also put in a series resistance because I just do that out of habit. Now, um, this is normally a 120 volt RMS um, sine wave coming out of your wall outlet in the US which means it's a peak of square root of two times that, or 170 volts. So that's why I have 170 volts. 
Also, one other thing you might want to consider is setting initial conditions for this capacitor. Um, since we're going to have 170 volts, if you set this as an initial condition where it's charged up to 170 volts, then you don't have to worry about any uh, starting inrush spikes. That um, one thing that negative thing that can do is it can cause your plots to show all these starting spikes and you're not really interested in that. So what I do is I set a dot IC going up here to a um, hit the spice directive and type in dot IC and voltage in element C2. I set it to 170. Okay, so now let's run this and see what we get. So we hit the running man and we've got the traces. Now, the first thing I want to measure is the voltage coming out of the wall outlet, this 120 volts AC. Now, keep in mind, you don't want to measure voltage to ground. So you don't just hover here and see the red probe and click it. What you need to do is measure the differential because this is not ground down here. Click on the top. Click and drag until I get the black probe and that will give you a differential and that's the, you can see 170 volt peak, 60 hertz, and that is what's coming out of the wall outlet. So now what are we getting here across the uh, load, the 100 ohm load? Well, we click on that and you can see we've got this uh, quasi DC with a bunch of ripple. Input goes up, it stores charge in the capacitor. As it drops, that capacitor discharges into the load, and that's why you've got this ripple. So you basically got it. We're all done. We've done. We've decided our power supply, right? Well, not really. Um, this is just the very first part. We've got AC to DC converter, but there is a lot more we need to consider. So in part two, we're going to look at the front end of the power supply, and we're going to look at what you can expect coming in from the power company and some things to keep in mind. So. Hope that helps. Uh, hope you join me in part two. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.